We're on our way to Antalya, but first we're doing the drive uh, that goes north along the coastline from Kash all the way up to Antalya. And there's a really cool place that we heard of called Olympus, which is, uh, it's like an old uh, ruin. It's an old city. <laughs> I don't know. the eternal flame and we might go up there if we decide that it has something cool but otherwise we're going right there we're starting the trek we're going one kilometer and then we're deciding if we're gonna go further from there I'm super pumped finding these mythological things are some of my favorite things to do so we're gonna check it out check out the natural gas and then keep going hopefully <laughs> I feel like we've been on the beach for the last like, or at least on the water for the last like two to three weeks. So even though you can go on the beach and everything in Olympus, I'm a lot happier that we're doing this trail because we haven't been hiking in like two months. So this will be fun. This is brilliant. We've seen trash all over Turkey and it's really a shame because Turkey is so, so beautiful. Turkey's so, so beautiful. And we see trash and plastic and bottles cans, everything everywhere. And so I love when I see a trash can that people use and put their stuff in because then you know it's at least like they're starting to work on it, I hope. But that's like one, that's one of the downsides here, I think would just be that people are not so aware of the impact that they leave when they go to places like this. The trail here is really well built. We just had our first look at the eternal flame. And in mythology, the king, or leader of this region, I don't really know what they called him, had a big fight with this fire-breathing monster and he killed him and they buried him here. And then the flames coming up are still the flames that are coming out of his mouth. And of course, that's just the legend. But what we know now is that it's a natural gas leak and that's why the flames are coming out forever. I've heard it's supposed to be really nice at nighttime, but we're not gonna see it at nighttime. But that's just because it probably looks really mystical and you can also see the stars above and everything at night. So. Uh, if you ever have the chance to come by Olympos, to stay here and then just come out to here at nighttime, it'll be brilliant. just crazy looking at this because there's nothing that's lighting the flame here and apparently this goes all year round. It's incredibly hot standing right up next to it but it's really cool to just admire it and see like where this is actually coming from. So like on the coldest of days this is still going and the fact that hundreds of years ago this was written about in Greek mythology is just mind-blowing. So this must have been here thousands of years before humanity even existed. Who knows? But it's just crazy to admire something that our past fellow humans were also admiring. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I mean, we're going to head back down because we're super tired. We were going to go all the way up to the top, so the seven kilometers. But if we do that, we're going to end up getting, making it to Antalya by like 9, 10 p.m. We haven't eaten any meal today besides breakfast. So the smart decision right now is to turn around and head back. We only have like half a thing of water left. So this was awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really happy we came. It's a nice little stop in between Cash and Antalya. So if you guys are ever driving this route or if you're staying in, I don't know what Olympos. this is. Olympos. Olympos, if you're staying in Olympos, it looks pretty like chill. Valley, I think yeah, it looks fun. super, super chill. So if you're into camping, if you're into just like a chill vibe, definitely come check this out and climb this mountain. It's not that far, it's like a, a kilometer up, but it's all the way uphill. 
You don't even need like hiking shoes. I have my sneakers on. You're good to go. There's a couple people I've seen in flip flops, and uh, so it doesn't really matter what you have. Just come check this out because not only is the gas lakes awesome, but the landscape surrounding it is also incredibly beautiful. So I'm happy we came and I'm happy Ruthie found this spot. I'm happy we came too. I don't know which mountain this is, but it's amazing. Amaze balls. We're about an hour away from Antalya and we just stopped at a supermarket because we realized that we need to spend very little money when we're in Antalya. So we got all of our breakfast, AKA cereal and milk. And we also got a lot of snack foods and um, a lot of like sandwich things because we don't really know if we're allowed to use the kitchen at the next place that we're going to. So just in case we're not, we didn't get like pasta or anything like that. But we also got a lot of snack foods that we really like, including Snickers because I am the worst with chocolate and sugar and I love it so much. And then Hammer also got chips because he's the worst with chips. And he loves chips so much. The worst with chips. And, and he got the really, it's supposed to be a really spicy flavor of Doritos. Are they spicy? Not super spicy. But this is a pretty good challenge because it's going to, we realize we don't have a lot of money to spend in Antalya. Antalya is like one of the more expensive places here in Turkey. So we'll be able to show you guys Antalya on a very, very, very tight budget. And when I say tight, that means like about 50 to 60 lira per day, which is less than $10 per day. Or no, just about $10. It's just, it's just about $10 per day for two people. So $5 per person. So we'll, we'll try to make that happen. We'll show you guys. This is the coolest room that we have gotten thus far, honestly. The bed's up here, which is pretty cool. We have our own bathroom, we got a chill spot, and we got a view of this really chill bar in the old town. So what we've learned about Turkey is a lot of beaches throughout are free, but there's also a lot of beach clubs that we found. So a lot of them do cost up to upwards of like 75 lira. This one in particular behind us actually costs 20 lira per person just to go inside. But there are a ton of public beaches in Antalya. They're just further out from the old city. So it's about 15, 20 minute drive to get to any public beach. If you want to enjoy this specific beach, you're going to have to give up 20 lira. For us, I don't think it's worth it because there's a ton of beautiful beaches throughout Turkey that are free and much better than this. So because we've been beach hopping for the past two weeks, we figured why not just chill out at home. It's also about to rain, so let's go. Visibility is a lot better today than it was yesterday. Which is surprising because it's storming today. <laughs> So we're currently in Antalya. There's a lot of things to do here in Antalya. It's one of Turkey's biggest cities. It's also one of Turkey's most beautiful cities. Just to name a few things that you can do here, and then I'm gonna kick it over to Ruthi to give you more detail. We are staying in the Old Town, so one of the biggest things that you could do here in Antalya is explore the Old Town, eat your way through, eat your way through that city, drink your way through that city, have some great shisha over here, and of course, of course, as with any city in Turkey, get some Turkish coffee. Okay, so the art scene, especially in the old city, is supposed to be really, really awesome here, and we're so excited to check out everything. This morning we saw one shop that had like paintings and rugs and all of that, but there's supposed to be a lot of modern and old types of art, so we're gonna check all of that out. There's also, especially in summertime, concerts going on at like every bar, whether it's DJs, like music artists, singers, like just records playing in the background. The music here is supposed to be absolutely incredible and they have music from all different styles and all different like walks of life and all around the world. Um, some other things that you could do here are going to the marina because the marina is supposed to be so beautiful. They have a ferris wheel and they have great views of the mountains that are across the water. So that I am super looking forward to. The parks and the marinas all on the seashore are supposed to be some of the best in the world. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's like a big game of Tetris, huh? Where are we right now? We're at Burger King. We've been eating local food for the past three months. And I guess you could consider Burger King and McDonald's and stuff like that and Domino's as comfort food for us, especially being from America. By the way, this is not a large in America. This is a large here in Turkey. A large in America is way bigger. We've been missing American type food. So we figured, you know what? Why not try some Burger King? <laughs> Nothing like an unhealthy chicken sandwich. French fries. French fries. Mm. And my hair is okay. Right. We've been walking around all day and this pub is actually right next to where we're staying. So while we're sitting here just relaxing and unwinding from the whole day, we are connected to our hotel's Wi-Fi and we get to enjoy all the beautiful things around us. It's got a really cool vibe and the music here is amazing. Plus, our server is an English major, so she's amazing with English and she's super friendly and we're just really happy to be here. It's a cool place. Turkey's a very unique country because it's where cultures really combine, right? So you have somebody like at a bar drinking, relaxing, unwinding, and then the right next door, you have the call for the prayer, the call for the den at a mosque. So it's just like a really interesting place where you have so many different cultures <laughs> coming into one. Yes, yeah, that's great. <laughs> this is our server, she's awesome. Hello. She's the best. Hello, America. Hello, the world. <laughs> <laughs>